It has not been a banner year in 2023 at the box office. Obviously, Oppenheimer and Barbie blew up, but it's been an absolute bloodbath for Disney in particular, and also for superhero movies in particular. And that doesn't just mean the MCU, but the DCEU, or the last remnants of it in particular. They actually had four DCEU movies scheduled for when all was said and done. And we've had three so far, Shazam Fury of the Gods, The Flash, and Blue Beetle. And all of them have been enormous box office bombs. And it appears, it looks like Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom will be joining them in very uh, indistinguished company as an absolute flop. This has a budget of a little bit over $200 million, significantly less than what we know they made the Marvels on. Although they have been under-reporting budgets of late, specifically Disney themselves. So I wouldn't be surprised if $205 million was actually more like $225 or maybe even $250 million. This is not a cheap movie to make, and the numbers are coming in, and it's actually going underneath The Flash, which cost a lot more money to make, and The Marvels as well. So it might not lose as much as those. And there is one other bright silver lining out there that means maybe, perhaps, Aquaman The Lost Kingdom won't be an enormous flop altogether. Now let's get into some of the details and what's going on here. According to early estimates, the Aquaman 2 box office is bombing. Ticket sales are massively trailing Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam which finished with less than $400 million at the box office. The first Aquaman opened to over $67 million with its three-day opening and over $100 million with its five-day Christmas opening. However, the sequel doesn't look to be coming anywhere near those numbers. Early estimates offer Aquaman The Lost Kingdom is on track for a three-day opening of between $32 and $42 million. And that is uh, much less than The Flash and The Marvels, two of the more notorious flops of 2023 But the budget, as I said, is much smaller than those movies. They didn't actually have like a trailer until maybe a month ago. So there hasn't been nearly as much marketing effort put into Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. So it might not lose as much money as those particular films. But it does look like it's going to be very difficult for Aquaman The Lost Kingdom to actually make money or break even or anything like that. The one silver lining in this is the first film, I believe... Aquaman did $330 million domestically and over $1.15 billion worldwide. And it had an enormous audience overseas. I believe the split was like 70% overseas revenue versus 30% domestic revenue, which isn't the most common number in the world. And it definitely cleaned up at the overseas box office. While a movie like Captain Marvel, obviously the the movie before the Marvels, actually did about the exact same numbers, right around $1.15 billion dollars. But the split on that one was like 60-40, 60% overseas revenue and 40% domestic revenue. So it did almost like $100 million better than Aquaman in the U.S. Well, Aquaman did uh, significantly better overseas. So if the turnout and the reception to Aquaman The Lost Kingdom overseas is much better and the people that enjoyed the first Jason Momoa film actually turn out not in the domestic box office, but overseas, specifically in Asia, There is a chance that this thing could actually make money. It probably uh, won't be the enormous bomb that the Marvels is. I believe it'll actually out-earn the Marvels and Flash worldwide because there is a built-in audience. People do like Jason Momoa. I've seen the trailers. It feels very much like the first film. And the cool thing about it is it does actually have like a real villain. Black Manta is a compelling character. He was pretty badass in the first film. He looks to be souped up for the sequel. So there is a chance, even though people don't like Uh, Amber Heard, and it sounds like there were a lot of problems with production. So there are things working against Aquaman The Lost Kingdom, and it certainly sounds like, or looks initially, that it will be opening at less than the Marvels in The Flash. But we also know the Marvels had, like, the biggest drop-off in second week in superhero movie history. Not just, like, MCU history, but superhero movie history. It actually dropped off bigger than Morbius. And if the word of mouth concerning Aquaman is better than the Marvels, and there wasn't good word of mouth regarding the Marvels, Perhaps the drop-off won't be as great, and there will be more legs to it. We know The Flash did not last in theaters very long, so it doesn't look good specifically domestically right now, but there is a chance that they they really need a win here because this is the last remnants of the DCEU. This is the last film that they'll do, but Aquaman was the most successful DCEU film ever. It went well over a billion dollars, an enormous success for them, and this was the last chance for them to make money before they get to the DCU. Uh, But I definitely think with all the bombs that we've been having, especially with the smaller properties, especially with the smaller properties like Blue Beetle and the Marvels, you know, characters that aren't as popular, I don't think we'll be seeing James Gunn take the amount of risk, at least that he's initially uh, 
promised or laid out as part of his plan. Like, I think we're going to see Superman. I think we're going to see Batman and maybe some of the A tier kind of characters, maybe Justice League, but maybe we don't get the authority so early on. Maybe we don't get a Swamp Thing movie so early on in there because they've lost just an enormous amount of money in 2023. Uh, it's actually kind of staggering, and they're definitely challenging Disney for the amount of money that you can lose in one year. And I don't think Disney will be taking nearly as many chances in phases five and six either. They're going to stop leaning into obscure characters for a while and get the houses back in order. At least that's what I kind of predict. You know, there are things that are in production that are already in the pipeline, but I think they're going to kind of clean that stuff up. Now, according to Box Office Pro, who gives us these projections, this is what really is going wrong with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. The general audience appetite for comic book movies has evolved and narrowed substantially in the five years since the first Aquaman came out. DC films have seen a particularly sharp decline with underperformances by Shazam Fear of the Gods and Blue Beetle this year. Early pre-sales are pacing 25% ahead of the aforementioned Shazam sequel and 62% behind Black Adam after one day of sample market tracking. A holiday release pattern could skew one-to-one comparisons in certain models. It's interesting that they do bring up like Shazam Fear of the Gods, which certainly is underperforming or at least initially underperformed what it appears that Aquaman The Lost Kingdom is gonna do. And while that was a bomb, it wasn't like the enormous bomb that some of these other projects are because it was more of a family a style movie. It's like a family superhero movie. And the budget is just so much lower than an Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom or a Flash movie or some of these other just outlandish budgets. Like I think a Black Adam also had a very large budget despite being a more obscure character, not really being known as a hero. He's more of a, a villain really, and sometimes maybe an anti-hero. But you know, the person that's coming best out of all this, I guess, is is the rock himself, the most electrifying man in entertainment today who basically got pushed out the door because Black Adam wasn't all that successful. And then it turns out once they announced the DCEU was over, James Gunn was taking over and the DCU was the future starting with Superman legacy. Like nothing has been successful. And Black Adam is the most successful movie out of all of those, like not even close. Like it did so much better than all the other movies, including the flash with James Gunn, a time or two, like said was the best superhero movie in the history of the world. I still think that was a miscalculation on his part. Even if David Zaslav wanted him to say that, I probably wouldn't have put my reputation behind what was uh, maybe not the worst movie in the history of the world, but did have some of the worst effects in the history of the world, but certainly wasn't even the best superhero movie that James Gunn has ever created. Probably wasn't even as good as the second best superhero movie that James Gunn has created, let alone like the best superhero movie ever, you know, eclipsing things like... um, Captain America and the Winter Soldier and X-Men 2, X-Men United, Endgame, the first uh, Avengers movie, and some of these really high water marks where we had really, really successful, really cool superhero movies like a Blade, Iron Man, stuff like that. Like it wasn't anywhere near those things, and they kind of tried to claim that it was likely to improve the box office projections. But at that point, you know, the Ezra Miller train was off the tracks. There was a one-man crime spree going across the world at that point. And I think people also saw the writing on the wall that the DCEU and the Flash wasn't the future. The future is Superman legacy. And I think that has hurt tremendously basically across the board interest in these movies, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. I think once James Gunn said this stuff doesn't matter and almost none of it will be incorporated into the DCU moving forward, it does appear that a ton of people decided to check out. It's not a surprise that Aquaman The Lost Kingdom might bomb at the box office as it had a number of things moving against it. It's the last of the DCEU movies, so fans are looking at the flick as meaningless, much like The Flash. Even Jason Momoa has teased he has done with Aquaman. It's now speculated Jason Momoa is going to play Lobo for James Gunn's new DCU. Rumors have also offered the film has undergone massive reshoots, so it's questioned if the movie is any good. There's also Amber Heard, who returns as Mira, and questionable elements in the film are said to have caused test audiences to walk out. Now, Amber Heard obviously is not like the star of the movie, but she was supposed to be a co-star, and it sounds like her role has been much diminished. Uh, We even got that like in in testimony from Walter Hamada during the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial where they had to drastically reduce it because they didn't like the on-stream chemistry between her and Jason Momoa as Aquaman, but they couldn't get rid of her because one of the major plot elements is Aquaman and Mira have a kid now, And that would be really weird if she was out of the picture, but all of a sudden he had a baby. So she's still in there, but apparently had a greatly reduced role. I don't think that will detract too much from the film. 
although a lot of people really dislike Amber Heard, in a lot of ways they dislike Amber Heard to a greater degree than Brie Larson. Like she does no good like uh, Q rating. People don't think very highly of her, but she's not starring in the film. She's not like uh, the main face. When you look at posters and stuff like that, it's certainly Jason Momoa. It's Orm, it's Black Manta, kind of stuff like that on the poster. It's not really Amber Heard. So I don't think that's going to detract too much, but I do think the story itself could do that because we do know that there are a lot of reports of people walking out of test screenings of the film specifically for scenes involving the baby because it apparently like the the fate of the baby in the movie might not be something a lot of people are really ready for especially in a superhero movie you know the rumor is that the baby died and they did have to do massive reshoots i'm not certain that 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 scene was removed or maybe they tweaked it or whatever me personally if i'm in charge i go well screw it let's keep the baby and maybe kill off mira because that's not working anyway if there is a chance that we're going to incorporate any of this Aquaman stuff into the future of the DCU, and if you were going to conclude one of the things, it would have been this. But also, it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. It sounds like they have already planned to move Jason Momoa over to Lobo, who's a very cool character. He's a Gazardi or whatever. He's like, a, I don't know, he's just like a vicious bounty hunter from a really weird alien race. Trust me, Jason Momoa is the perfect man to cast as Lobo. They probably should have cast him as Lobo initially, even though Zack Snyder turned Aquaman into like Aqua Bro. But people seem to like it, and they certainly um, really seem to gravitate to what Jason Momoa is doing to the character. And he's a likable guy. He does have some on-screen presence. And it certainly worked out, at least for the first film, when they made you know over a billion dollars on a solo film. I don't think anyone was expecting that. I knew I wasn't, and I don't think even Warner Brothers were. So that was an enormous success. It doesn't appear they will reach those heights again with the sequel, Aquaman and Lost Kingdom. But stranger things have happened. And this movie, at least the first movie, relied heavily, heavily on the overseas box office, much more so than a lot of movies that have been really successful. This one had a lower domestic gross, but also did very well overseas. If the movie's still good and people still like Jason Momoa as Aquaman overseas, it could still break even or even possibly make some money. You know, if it hit the same numbers, it certainly would. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. As I mentioned earlier, Amber Heard has been a big problem, a thorn in the side of Warner Brothers and Jason Momoa and really Aquaman 2. And she came out and kind of gave her a final FU to everybody because she feels like she was diminished. It was taken from shots specifically at Momoa himself and the director of Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. If you haven't seen this one, this was actually pretty funny stuff. There's also a link in the video description. <laughs> 